Well, hello there. My name is Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to be playing with some UFO paper today. I'm calling it a UFO roundup because I'm going to show you a bunch of different things you can do with it, but I will never in one video cover everything. So please stay tuned by subscribing and I will show you more things in coming months as I do more experiments with this paper. So I want to tell you a little bit about it. It comes in both white and translucent and it may come in other things. This is just what I have that I'm working with. In this video, I'm going to focus really on the white. This is super smooth synthetic paper and it's waterproof, which means any liquid is going to sit on top. It's durable, so it's not going to tear and it wipes off clean and you'll see how that plays out. And it, it's going to be a bright white underneath in certain circumstances when you wipe it off. And it's also 100% recyclable. I was very surprised by that because I thought it was a plastic paper just by the feel of it. So first I'm gonna do alcohol inks on it. And this is one of the places that I think is a good entry point if you wanna play with this paper. These are alcohol inks that have been out for ages. And this technique has been done on glossy papers before and works great on them, but it also works wonderfully on UPO. So if you haven't tried it before on glossy paper, it's great to try here as well. There are some things that'll do here that are very different than glossy paper. So don't think of UPO as photo paper. It's not that at all. It doesn't have that glossy, shiny surface. It also is not the same as the distress stamping paper that's out there. It's very different. It's just, you have to touch it in order to really understand what it is. So in addition to a couple of colors of alcohol inks, I'm dropping on the silver and the gold, which don't really show up to be much in this particular instance, but they do wipe out the color so you can see areas getting lighter. And it just, I love how these dots just keep merging into each other and you can keep layering them on. There's a video I'll link you to at the end where there's a gal who did this and she actually did doodling in each one of the circles and made this beautiful Zentangled piece out of, I mean, it was just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So I'm not doing that to mine, but <laughs> I thought I'd let you know that it's a fun thing to do out there. So I'm gonna speed this up as we go because I don't wanna take forever. This is already gonna be a crazy long video showing you so many different techniques. But here I'm using the same alcohol inks in just different colors. I wanted to do something more fall-like and show you how you build on what you've already got. So I keep adding more on here, adding more dots of color, and you just kind of sit and let it happen and watch it and watch things go and then if you want to add more of another color just drop some other colors on and it just slowly morphs and here it, it kind of really mushed out and I lost a lot of that little detail so then I decided to go in with the alcohol solution the blender solution from Ranger and drop that on it looks like like these really beautiful little mushrooms or something. I'm not really sure how to describe it. It's just really beautiful. And eventually, as you build up more ink, you'll end up with more defined shapes and they make great backgrounds for cards. And all you need is a gorgeous sentiment like this one from Hero Arts and your card's done, like super, super easy. So next, I wanted to try my Copic reinkers because I have a ton of those. And if you're a Copic colorist and if that's why you follow me, this is another thing you can do with your reinkers same basic technique, just drop your colors on here. I decided I was gonna do some bright colors, so I thought I'd go for yellow and pink and green. And as I did this, I discovered something. Well, I'm not sure I discovered it, I remembered something, which is that all of these colors being opposite each other on the color wheel are actually going to make brown. So parts of this are gonna turn kind of a, a brown color. I have some colorless blender in a mini mister and sprayed it on and in the areas that were already dry it retains that texture so I'm gonna use that whole idea in just a few minutes I'm setting things aside to dry while I start working on more pieces and here I wanted to see what happens when you put it on wet liquids so this is wet reinker with the wet colorless blender and it does seem to work and I wish you could freeze frame it right there but you can see it just slowly melts in because as long as this Yupo paper has moisture on the surface. It just keeps moving until it's done. So then I decided to add a blue to this because since adding a complementary color made everything brown, <laughs> I stayed in the analogous colors realm here, but you can see another spritz and some areas that were dry retain the texture. And then I decided to just add more dots in some of the other areas. And you could go on forever with this, but you don't want to go on totally forever because eventually it will make a sticky pool of mess. 
and you don't want to go on quite that long. But as you experiment, you'll find out just how far you can go before you start getting that sort of tacky feel. But you can always put it behind a shaker or something if, you, if it gets too tacky and still use that gorgeous paper that you've created. And here I'm just going to use the Colorless Blender on both the alcohol inks and the Copic ones to add texture once they're dry. And then you can see they also have really gorgeous texture. And I love how that, that works way better when it's dry than when it's wet because all of that little detail is really fun. Now for watercolor, which is what this paper is, says it's made for. And one of the things I found was that it's a lot harder than it seems to be. And I've talked to a lot of people who saw me playing with this recently and they're like, will you teach us how to do this? Because I just come up with a hot mess. So I put it in the drawer and I just never got it back out again. So I'll tell you a few things that I've learned and I'll keep trying to experiment with it as, uh, as things go on. And this one is, I'm just going to start putting some color on here. These are my Gansai Tambis and, uh, from Kirtaki. And I'm just putting color on here. You can see like the instant it touches anything wet, it just keeps moving. If you think about when you spill something on the kitchen counter, it all starts to move toward one area. Like if your kitchen counter is a little bit crooked and that's what this is all doing. All that color, that moisture is gathering in that red purple section up there. So there's a couple things you can do to it. Uh, because if you don't do something to it, you're going to end up with this. These were two early experiments that I did where this part over here is great, but this part where it all pulled together is just completely tacky and gooey. And this is after like three days of waiting for it to dry. So you don't want to leave a pool like that. And that means you want to either dab it off, move that color around, do something to it. You can allow a lot of water to be there. So if it's thin color, you can let it dry and it should dry okay. You just don't want to let a lot of pigment pool up together. It's pigment that ends up getting all sticky and weird. So I'm just going to dab off some stuff. I'm going to swirl some color around and add, just add a bunch of different colors to this background. And you can dab it off with different types of fabrics to get textures and stuff. But remember all those textures, as long as that's all wet, it's going to continue to move. So you're not going to hold a lot of that texture while it's still super wet. Now here it's super wet and I'm going to draw into it. This is where the wiping out to white really comes in because I can take a dry brush. There's no water on my brush. I'm just wiping it off on a paper towel off camera and pulling that paint off and wiping it. Isn't that cool that you can just reverse out pictures out of this. Now flowers are really easy to do. You can just do simple flower shapes and you know do different sized ones that's what i'm going to do here a couple different sizes and i'm not going to cover the whole thing in flowers I'm just going to do a few spots and if you pick the areas that have the heavy pigment and erase it from there then you'll get stronger contrast between the background and the flower image you could do this with hearts you can do it with any kind of simple image that you can paint in reverse with your brush and just remove all of that color from it so I'm going to go over here to another area that's pulled up with color and pull out some more of that, that pigment. And you can do it with a bunch of different sizes brush. I think this one is a number four that I'm pulling this out with and, and just keep scrubbing at it. Now, if you wait until it's dry, you can use a damp brush and do just about the same thing. Sometimes the color, the, the paper will be stained if it's in certain pigment colors. So there's some that will stain, but you can see these wiped off to pretty much white right away. So now I'm just gonna add some stems for my flowers. And you see, I didn't add a ton of flowers all over. I just added one cluster in the area where I had the heavy pigment and I'm just wiping this away. Now there's some areas that'll close up and I'll just go back in and re-wipe them. So you'll need to keep an eye on it as it dries to make sure things don't close up entirely. And then I can just add some really pretty yellow centers to my flowers. And I dropped in just a little tiny bit of red and moved it around and just let it be loose and washy. And look how easy that is. <laughs> and here's what it dried like. So all of those little different pools dried as little shapes of watercolory blobbies. All I did was add a sentiment and put it on a card base. And it's very pretty. Now, brusho, you guys know if you've watched me recently that I've been on a brusho kick and I wanted to see what brusho would do on this. So I 
spread some water on it. I spritzed it on with a mister. And then I'm gonna shake on some reds and some yellows. I wanted something more yellow and I ended up getting a little more red on here than I was wanting to do, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I thought I'm gonna see if I can use the wipe it off property to change the color of it. So I've got all of this red on there and I sprayed it with more water and I threw on a little bit more red because I wanted some richness of red, but then I wanted to spritz it around, move the color around and add more yellow. And I just kept kind of going back and forth. I debated between getting too heavy and then trying to put texture in it or exactly how I wanted to do it. If I had let this dry, probably would have ended up with some sticky pools. So I had to figure out what to do and that meant dabbing it off. So I dabbed off some of the red because I then wanted to add more yellow and make it a little heavier on the yellow. And so I shook some of that on and then moved it around again. And I mean, you can keep going back and forth with this kind of stuff forever. <laughs> it's really easy to just keep working with it. And if you don't know anything about brush-o powders, I'll link you to my brush-o video at the end. But this is the paper after it's dried. And it was amazing. I mean, look at the difference that that was from what I what I had left there on the paper. And it did take overnight for it to dry. You've got to let this stuff dry for a long time, but it's got a really interesting chalky texture to the surface, which I found amazing. And then when I actually stamped on it, I wiped out the color for the egg. It was already dried, but I just took a damp brush and wiped out the egg and got a white egg in there. Very cool, huh? All right, now let's talk about creating a scene because if watercolorists can create whole scenes and whole paintings, why can't we do that, right? So I decided to look on Google and I found a whole lot of people who paint things with Yupo. So look up Yupo watercolor painting and you'll see lots of ideas. And this one seemed like a simple thing. I see lots of people just do a scene. So let's do a scene for a card. And I put a kind of a yellow and orange and red sky at the top and then just started putting some blues and greens at the bottom. Now you could leave it very simply like this and stamp a sentiment on it. It would be very pretty because I think you get the idea that it's, it's a scene, but I'm gonna add more to it and I'll use some of the properties of the paper to, to do some of the things I've been talking about already. So I put some water on it to, to make the yellow around the sun. I took a dry brush and wiped the sun out. And then I wanted to see if I could start moving the paint around a little bit. It's still very, very wet. And by the way, I'm using my Koi watercolors this time. So I just wanted to test out some different watercolors. So they all seem to have about the same kind of properties here. But I wanted the sun to have sort of this washy linear thing going on because I saw a lot of people doing that on, on Google and why not just smush the paint around and see if it stays, see how, how soft it gets. It's something you'll have to play with. And you'll, you'll start to notice after a while how long you need to leave things to dry maybe before doing something else with it. Here I started realizing that my, my trees weren't looking like what I wanted them to, so I let it dry a while. And you could see the difference there. I went in with a damp brush and made a little river so that I could start building the trees. Now that, now that things are a little bit dry, I didn't wait for it to completely dry, I just waited maybe an hour or so and let the color set. And now I added some red because I thought, well, it's getting to fall time at the time that I'm shooting this video, so why not add that? I added too much, so I dabbed some off because I didn't want that sticky pool. And then I put in just a light amount of some orangey color and started spreading things around with a wet brush. And then I did the same thing on the other side, just adding little bits of color and doing that around the little river that I've created. Although I have the option to go and change the river too, because that's the beauty of this paper. You can keep changing thing as, things as you go. It's really fun that way. <laughs> I'm just really excited about this stuff. And so I'm just going to spread the color around, dab it off, do different things to it. Now, uh, before I forget, one of the things that I know everybody's going to ask is, can you emboss on this paper? And I just want to let you know, first, it's plastic-ish. So I tried heat setting some stuff to try to get it to dry faster. Don't do that because it's plastic. It's going to melt. <laughs> it's a synthetic. So uh, you don't want to emboss anything or heat dry any of this. You could probably put it out in the sunshine if you want to let it dry a little bit faster or, you know, leave it in a window or something. But for the most part, you're just going to have to be patient and wait for it. So now I've got my finished dried piece and I had just wiped out a little more of the river so I could clean it up more. 
and done. And I'm just going to put the sentiment on the inside because I didn't even want to mess with the outside. And finally, let's mix some wa different watercolors together because I want to see if they all play nice together. And I'm going to draw an image. So you could use a leaf dye or a leaf stencil, but I'm just going to take a leaf out of my backyard and I traced it onto a piece of the white Yupo. And one of the things that's cool about the Yupo as well as all these other features is that you don't have to tape it down because it's not going to curl. I haven't found that curling is an issue, so I'm, I can just work on it straight up on my work surface. And I'm painting it in with some of the Gansai Tambi reds and throwing in some of those colors. And I'm filling in the leaf and I wanted to leave some of the sp spaces like the yellow on that corner and throw a little bit yellow in the places where I'm seeing on the leaf itself. You could actually copy a leaf from your yard just like this because it, you're going to have a lot more options to, to follow exactly what Mother Nature does. But then I wanted to add some of my PH Martins. So the PH Martins are really intense in color and I want to see how they mix and move colors around a little bit. You can see they're blending nicely. Next, I grabbed some more intense color from the PH Martins, like, ooh, a little bit worked, so a lot of it might work better, right? <laughs> so I started spreading that color around. And you can definitely tell there's some intensity in, in the color here as well. And I just kept moving it around, and I'm in danger at this point. Remember what I told you about watercolor, if it starts pooling and puddling and you get too much of the actual pigment, it's gonna get sticky and weird. So I'm aware of that and look at what happened as I let it sit there for an hour. I just wanted to see what would happen and it all completely mushed like this. Now that would be beautiful in certain circumstances. If you don't need to have it be on a card, then it could be beautiful to have a puddle of color. But I dabbed it off with a paper towel and I went, wow, this is really cool because it looks like leaf texture now. So I decided to exploit that and dab it off and I move the color around a little with a brush, but here I'm taking a dry brush and I'm putting the lines back into my leaf. I'm erasing those lines back out. How cool is that, that you can take your finished piece and draw back into it? You could do, you could do a whole page of color and then just start peeling out colors little by little and draw a pattern in it. It would just be, it, there's so many things you could do with this. It's crazy. So I'm gonna have more YouTube videos on this in the future and I wish I had a video on this piece. This was a test piece I did with a bunch of different watercolors, the Koi's, the Kiritake's, a little bit of PH Martin's. I don't know how I did this. I really don't, but it's beautiful and I will be doing more videos in the future on some of those things, so stay tuned for that. Here's a couple other background videos that I've done if you're interested in those kinds of textures for your cards and I will see you guys next time. Make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified of my next video that gets posted. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.